Hello, everybody, and welcome to Moron Minds. I'm Dan Man Mountain. Uh, we're here today to explore Minas Tirith and talk with its builder, Desert Shadow. We are on the Sundercraft server, uh, Geek and Sundry server. I encourage you to watch the July 5th episode of Minds and Crafts, where they toured Minas Tirith with uh, a little bit more detail uh, of the whole place. Today, uh, we're going to look inside and we're going to talk to Desert Shadow about it, how long it took, why she made it, all of these things. And so let me go ahead and introduce Desert Shadow. Welcome. Hello. Hey, and we got to work in this time. Excellent. <laughs> Take two of the show. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, first question, how long did it take? I've heard nine months. Um, It was actually closer to about, oh, I want to say like eight months or so. I'm still working on like some of the finishing touches inside that you can't see. Uh, but I started in November of last year. Wow. So right around the time the server started back up, more or less. Um. Uh, not too far from that. Yeah. And why Minas Tirith? What what does Lord of the Rings mean to you that you spent these eight months uh, building this giant wall? Um. Well, for starters, let this be a lesson to everybody. I was sick one day, and the only thing I could really stand to do was play on my computer. And I'm like, well... I'll build the, the gate to Minas Tirith because it's a really cool gate. So I went and I um, looked for pictures, because that was my references, was pictures, and decided to, I'm like, okay, so I'm like, well, this looks like a brick, and this looks like a brick, and I just counted all the way around, and I finished just the gate, and it didn't look all that great standing out there by itself in the middle of nowhere. So I went and I added the ramparts or whatever they are on either side. And from there, it's just like, well, let's just build the whole thing. So I started outlining stuff and I actually used glass blocks to outline where I wanted uh, each section of wall to curve back to try to get it to go round. I did a horrible job trying to get it to go around, so eventually I'm just like, okay, I'm stopping here, this looks good. <laughs> but yeah, so it just kind of like, was this one thing I was going to do just to waste time while I was sick? And then it decided to be all, let's build the whole thing, and here we are eight months later. And as anyone who knows on the server, you called it wall hell quite a bit, uh, yes. quite often. Uh, how was that time? Did you ever grow frustrated? Did you ever feel like just chucking it and not finishing? Or And what kept you motivated? The number of times I felt like just taking TNT and blowing it all up was quite hilarious. Um, at the beginning, it wasn't too bad because it's like, you know, the start of a new project is going to take a while. Yay. And then... You get where you're like halfway through and it's just a slog. It's like that dungeon crawl that never ends kind of feeling, you know? Oh, yeah. And and then I um, started getting to the end. I started seeing actual walls being up and the, and the shape that everything was taking. And it was like, wow, this is starting to look cool. And it was also like, okay, I'm finished with the wall. I was getting finished with the walls and I started building the citadel that sits on top. And it's actually when the city started taking shape, it was like, yay. And it started becoming really enjoyable because I enjoy like the building, building, building part of it. I'm, gr I'm great at shells. I'm horrible at insides. The inside of the citadel is actually like my best achievement as far as interior design on here goes. Well, let's go but, in as we talk. Okie dokie. Uh, so I got most of this built up, and it started looking better. And I started getting excited again after like four or five months of just uh, slog, wall hell all over the place. 
Uh, and then I had to do the back end, which was just a slog all over again. <laughs> <laughs> but you saw it in your mind's eye and and just kept going yeah i mean one thing i did do that i kind of scrapped is because ministerius is actually built into a mountain in the movie right and i was going to try to make it look like that and just okay here's my cutoff point for where i would stop the mountain so i didn't have to build a whole mountain mm -hmm. and i was trying to build up the sides and i couldn't get it to look right and I figured by the time I started getting it to look right, it would have taken so long that I was just like, I am not doing all of that work. That's just too much work. That would be like another year before I even got it um, done. So I actually changed it. And instead of doing, um, yeah, instead of doing um, the mountain like I was going to do, I ended up just doing fillers. To finish off the back and make it look decent. Mm -hmm. And did you? So you cut that out. You decided just not to do the mountain. Did you do any major revisions where you had to destroy stuff that you had built and sort of start over? Um. Yeah, actually, uh, the walls came up okay once I got them outlined, but I made sure I outlined them. But it took me like five or six starts on trying to figure out how high each one should be. Mm. And then when it comes to the statues that are in the hall here, uh, I tried to do like a regular statue, kind of build it up taller instead of short statues because they're really tall in the, in the movie, if you look. And I couldn't do it. So I started looking for like smaller statue alternatives online and found these. And just like, okay, I can do this. And that's, and I had done them all, but I had done them lower to the ground. And I had Enzo come in and I'm like, Enzo, help. I need perspective. And he's like, well, if you want it to look like the movie. And he would actually go look for pictures to like compare for me mm -hmm. to help me get it accurate. He's like, they need to be higher. So I actually had all these statues up, had to destroy them, raise up the pedestals and build them again to make them look the way they needed to look. Wow. Well, and they do look great. I mean, each one has his own little thing, and and they're really, really perfect. Appreciate that Enzo helping out. Yes, he actually helped a lot. I'm like, Enzo, how about this? And he's like, well, let me go check and see what the movie is like. Mm. And I was like, and would help me figure stuff out, especially in the Citadel. A lot of stuff in the Citadel he gave input on. Mm. Yeah, there's a website out there that has screenshots from a lot of movies and almost second by second screenshots so you can really get every view they provided. I'll uh, try to get that and put that up on sundaycraft.com. I don't remember what it is offhand, but uh, I'll try to get it up on the website today. Um, and what about the materials? Did, did you go through different materials? Did you decide pretty quickly to do the, the stone what about that? The stone was actually pretty quick because even though it's called the White City, um, if you look at the movie, it's all stone. And this, of course, was before the 1.12 edition. And I didn't want to use anything that was flammable. I wanted it to look like a fortress that would stand bombardment, as that's what it's supposed to be. Right. So, and I don't like cobble. I don't like the look of cobble. I did use it some as kind of a breakup, so it wasn't just like vast seas of nothing but uh, and then like for the ground as you see how it, it slopes up because in the movie it slopes up I used um, cement brick because I didn't want to change the coloring but I wanted to get a break up from just this sea of smooth stone mm -hmm. so that was pretty easy the hardest I think the hardest part was trying to figure out in here in the citadel you see the um obsidian pillars because there is a play on white and black in the, in the citadel and i went and i tried uh all the black color ones that they had at the time and obsidian just looked the best to me after looking at it. of course i'm using a texture pack versus normal minecraft so that kind of skews things for a bit 
And then the lighting. I didn't want torches everywhere because after a while it's just torches, 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 and that's to me that's all you see. Yeah. And I wanted in uh, Minas Tirith in the movie there is no actual lighting. It's just the natural light that comes in through the windows and all of that. But Minecraft doesn't do that because it's not natural. It's computer generated. It doesn't stream in naturally. Mm-hmm. So I needed to add light, but I didn't want to uh, take away from it too much. And I started using the uh, iron bars for pendant lights just to put between the glowstone. And I chose glowstone simply because I don't like the way sea lanterns look. Yeah, sea lanterns almost look a little modern. And so they're good for some builds, not good for others. You know, you really want to pick what looks right for the type of architecture and the mood you're going for. And I think you did really well. These look really great. Uh, I like the, you know, these massive cables holding onto these lights, lighting up this enormous hall. Uh, it looks like something that would be there. Well, thank you. Uh, now, you showed it off on stream on Geek and Sundry's Minds and Crafts Wednesdays from 4 to 6 Pacific. Uh, but you were nervous to finally show it off. Why? I was just like, I've spent so long, and I'm like, what if nobody likes it? (laughs) It's one thing to take, like, a week or something or even a month and build something, and it's, but when the expectation starts slowly building up in your head, you're just like, I don't think I can face this, but they liked it, so that's good. But you'd had pretty good feedback before that. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, you guys are my friends. So, you know. You can't trust that. us. My friends are lying to me, those bastards. Well, the voices in your head, yeah, yeah. basically. No, we're being nice, is what, what you're thinking. Yeah. No, I get that. And what about once you finally showed it off, how did you feel? A lot of relief. It's like, yay. Because also, one of the things I wanted to do, and I was thinking of this before I even had the walls up, is I wanted the community to come in and build, like, homes and populate it. Like, it would naturally be populated by any any city that slowly builds up as people come in. Mm-hmm. So I was like, the structure's here. Come in, build, leave your mark, be a part of it. That that was kind of my intent from the beginning. It's also like a giant love letter to you guys, because it's like, Here's my labor of love, my best work I think I've ever done. Come be a part of it, please. <laughs> and that's already begun. I was there was uh, construction already going on down below uh, for uh, an armor shop, uh, a metal shop um, that's already been built, and I'm sure more will follow as as time goes on. And yeah, please, D- and- decaf toaster yesterday went in and and built an armory. Yeah. And please come in and do it. There's a lot of room, so there's a lot of space. It needs everything a good city, good human city in uh, the realms can can use. Uh, so come on in and build. Um, and uh, I guess the inevitable question is, what comes next? Uh, maybe something from Game of Thrones? Hell no, never. <laughs> You have expressed a few times your disfavor toward Game of Thrones, but uh, what is yeah, next? I don't like it. I honestly have no idea. Do you have a and home? One of, I do. I have a home on the survival. I actually use the lower portion of it in part as a pit stop for people that can come. If I, it's not really built up right now because I have been over here doing this mm-hmm. versus over there you know, supplying it, but I do have like a farm and animals down there. So I do have a home on the survival and I do tend to it every now and then. The one thing I did do when I was getting frustrated and I'm like, I just need a small break from building this is I recreated um, the hedge maze from the Overlook Hotel and from the Shining. So I did do that. Yeah, we saw a little, they stumbled upon that uh, in the show and had a lot of fun with it. They uh, 
seem to enjoy mazes. They enjoy getting stuck in them too, which is very funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't break anything, so big bonus there. I know, except they didn't read the book, which I thought was funny. They saw the book, but they never read it. Oh no. What what uh where is that? At the beginning of the hedge maze. Behind oh, Minas Tirith. Yeah, for the hedge maze. Gotcha. Well, maybe they can come back sometime and uh, do the maze more uh, when they have more time. This is just an amazing build. I'm flying around Thank out you. back. We're seeing the big pillars where uh, you decided not to do the mountain, and I think rightly so. That would have just been a lot of work for... Uh, not a lot of payoff. I think this this looks really good, and you get the sense of the place, and it's enormous. Thank you. Uh, is there anything uh, you want to say before we wrap this up? Oh, thank you guys for being supportive and for enjoying it and being my friends. I. I there's been so many times where I come on just to chat with you guys and don't even build or anything. Because I just, you guys are in my heart and I love you to bits. Well, we love you too. This was an amazing build that crashed into a wall. And uh, really appreciate you coming on today and showing us a little bit more and uh, answering my silly questions. Thank you, everybody. You're quite welcome. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Desert Shadow and Dan Man Mountain on Moron Minds. Stay tuned for more episodes and watch Minds and Crafts on Geek and Sundry Twitch, 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific Time on Wednesdays. Have fun, everybody. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.